Uh, so a little bit of background about me. Uh, I was born and raised in a small town in Alberta called Didsbury. We're located about halfway between Edmonton and Calgary, and it's a small town of about 4,500 people. Uh, I attended the University of Alberta and graduated in 2017 with a Bachelor of Science specialization in biochemistry. Following graduation, I began working at an environmental testing company called Exova as a lab technician, and we primarily focused on soil testing. My main job was actually to streamline and modify a method for detecting club root in soil. And then after that, I began working at TMIC in 2019. So I've been here officially three years full-time working, going on four. And I primarily work with the LCMS service work and method development. So for my presentation today, I thought we would have a nice, easy, fun presentation. So I'm gonna be talking about the chemistry of ice cream. And for ice cream, there's four main components that go into it. So obviously the biggest one is actually the fat coming from the cream. The type of fat that is used in ice cream is predominantly made up of triglycerides. And this chemical composition is extremely important. The content of the fat actually helps determine the melting point of the ice cream. And obviously you don't want your ice cream to be melting right away, but you also want it to be soft enough for you to eat. And interestingly enough, uh, anyone that's ever had vegan ice cream or dairy-free ice cream probably knows that it's made out of palm oil or coconut oil. And that's because these fat compositions have similar melting points to those of cream and dairy. Another big component of the ice cream is the fact that it is an emulsion. Normally, water and fat do not like to mix. They will often separate out. But with an emulsion, the very small droplets of fat are dispersed within the water. Uh, this helps to prevent the separation of them while also helping form the creamy taste. Uh, and this is caused by the milk proteins coating the fat molecules. So the Fat molecules will get surrounded by protein molecules and they will prevent the fat from forming into larger molecules while also helping it mix with the water. Uh, for most commercial ice creams, emulsifiers are also added. And these contain two components, uh, one side that is water soluble and then one side that is fat soluble. So these emulsifiers will actually help with the milk proteins combine and they provide a thin membrane surrounding the droplets, which makes them less likely to cluster when you are adding air to your ice cream. Another key component of ice cream is with the structure. So when ice cream is made, it is simultaneously frozen and you wanna keep adding air into it at the same time. So the more ice, most ice creams have a significant amount of air in them, and the amount of air is actually one of the determining factors about what type of ice cream you have, and it's one of the key differences between, say, ice cream and gelato. So the big thing is that you need the fat and protein components present to, in order to incorporate more air. So that's why when you have something like a sorbet with the, with the, the lack of dairy, you don't have the fat and protein in it, so you're not able to add as much air into it. That's why it has that slightly icier texture. And the more air that you incorporate actually causes the ice cream to melt faster. So most commercial ice creams have a lot of air incorporated in them. This helps them mass produce them easier. And it also helps them use less products while still filling larger containers. So for commercial ice cream, it's typically made in large barrels with rotating blades inside them. And these barrels are typically surrounded by liquid ammonia. So this liquid ammonia keeps the barrels below minus 30 degrees Celsius, meaning that they're very cold. When the cream touches the sides of the barrels as it's rotating, it freezes, and then it's immediately scraped away by the rotating blades. This constant freezing and scraping away allows small ice crystals to form and allows them to be dispersed throughout the ice cream. And the small ice crystals that you can form, that's what causes the ice cream to occur. So typically higher quality ice cream will have these smaller ice crystals incorporated throughout them. And you'll notice a smoother texture when you're eating them. The other two main components are gonna be flavors and colors and then stabilizers. So as everyone knows, ice cream can have a very wide array of flavors. 
These can range from natural flavors to man-made products as well, as well as different flavor enhancers that will affect the taste of it and texture of the ice cream. Uh, and then for stabilizers, this is more common in the mass produced ice cream. Typically you want stabilizers that will prevent the breakdown of the ice cream so that it has a longer shelf life. These stabilizers are typically found from plant materials, including seaweed and fungi. Uh, so the stabilizers will help prolong your life of the ice cream. So when you combine them all together, we get this fantastic picture about what all the components are. Uh, and then to end off, I just wanna go through some of the main ice cream places found around Edmonton. So one of the main ones and probably the most well-known is made by Marcus. It was founded in 2016 by a food scientist who decided he wanted to try a lot of different flavors of ice cream, but he couldn't find them anywhere. It's a small batch American style ice cream, which means that the ice cream products have more air incorporated into them. And it focuses on using local ingredients and flavors. There are two main stores for it, uh, one on White Avenue and then one down in the brewery district just off 124th Street. Uh, the second main one in Edmonton is Kind Ice Cream. They are very similar to Made by Marcus where they focus on using local ingredients and flavors. And they are also a small batch American style ice cream. They were founded in 2019 and they also have two locations, one down in the Ritchie neighborhood and then one over in Highlands, which is Northwest, Northeast. Uh, a unique ice cream place is Yellowed. Uh, they are a Filipino and Asian inspired ice cream and baked goods store. They are located down White Avenue and they focus on more traditional Asian flavors of ice cream. Uh, their biggest selling one is an ube flavored ice cream uh, characterized by its bright purple color from the yam. Another main ice cream place in Edmonton and probably one of the most famous ones is scoop and roll. So scoop and roll is based on a type of ice cream started in Thailand labeled Tim Pad. So it's typically ice cream that is placed on a very cold griddle. Yeah, so they pour the cream like and the ingredients it's out it's and then they're well, able yeah, to yeah, yeah. add everything to it directly there and they will make it in front of you. Uh, and it was established in 2015. They have one main shop where you can actually sit down and eat ice cream. And then during the summer, they send out up to 12 food trucks throughout the city so you can experience them on the go. And then our final unique place is La Carrera Gelateri Cafe. So it is one of the most well-known gelato shops in Edmonton. Uh, it's located just off Jasper on 109th Street. Uh, it was founded in 2008 and it tries to bring gelato over from Italy and provide it in Edmonton. And with mentioning gelato, I think it's good to know what the difference is between gelato and the typical ice cream you would find in a store. So the biggest thing is gelato has less air in it. So this means that it has a denser texture and it's less uh, light and fluffy. It also has a lower amount of fat in it compared to other ice creams. And then it also allows for higher melting points. So this higher melting point allows for more unique flavors that wouldn't necessarily be stable in ice cream at lower temperatures. And that is it for my presentation today.